Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring, and today is Saturday, January 13th, 2024. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for coming and visiting me uh, for my weekend review podcast. I'm doing this podcast again from Santa Marta, Colombia. I have a little picture up there doing the podcast from the balcony today with this beautiful beautiful view. It's really nice. I hope you can hear me okay. It's a little windy, a little noisy outside, but hopefully we'll get it done. But one of the best things about trading is that you can do it any from anywhere in the world. And uh, I traded last week, and in this podcast today, we're going to go over all those trades that I did do in Colombia. So the format today is, first of all, we are going to run the U.S. Legal Disclaimer. Secondly, we're going to come back. We're going to take a look at all the trades I made last week. We're going to talk about when I entered them, why I entered them, what was the setup, what was the strategy, what was my thinking, what was the confluence of signals of why I took the trade. I'm going to show you how I position size correctly. I'm going to show you where I placed my emergency stop. I'm going to show you where I placed my end of day stop. I'm going to show you how I take partial profits if it moves up, e moves up each day uh, by the value of 0.45 ATRs. If I get to a certain level above my entry, which is 1.5 ATRs above my entry, then I go into trailing stop mode. And from there, I tighten up my stop, but I'll show you all this. So I'll show you when, uh, when I entered, why I entered, and most importantly, how I am going to manage the trade going forward, either to the upside or to the downside. After that, we are going to do a little bit, uh, we're going to touch a little bit on trader psychology. It's always the most important skill. There's a lot of skills in trading, like getting yourself a good process and following the process, but you have to follow the process, and that all comes down to trader psychology, and that is a skill. You can have the best trading process in the world. But if you're not disciplined enough to stay in there and let that process play itself out, then you need some help with that. And uh, uh, hopefully by me discussing this each week, hopefully I drive the point home. Uh, after trader psychology, uh, I have gone down through my watch list, both on the daily charts and the weekly charts. And I have identified some trades that I'm looking for next week. They're not where they need to be yet. If they were, I probably would have already taken the trades. Uh, but what I'm looking for, I'm looking for key support levels if I'm going long or key resistance levels if I'm going short. Like I said, I've gone down through my entire watch list and I have identified some look good that have some potentials for confluences, combinations of levels uh, coming into view if they get there. They're not there yet, so I just have to be patient, and that's what I do on uh, Friday nights, actually. My exciting life on Friday nights, I go down through my through my watch list, and I look for levels below me if I'm going long that look good to me, that make sense to me. They're not there yet, but if they get there, I will definitely consider the trade. We'll consider the trade, and I, will, uh, I have identified those, and I will show you what those levels are, and if they get there, then yeah, I may take the trade. Uh, I did find some on the on the dailies. Uh, interestingly enough, I could not find anything on the weekly that caught my attention. So no weeklies, but I have some really good ones on the dailies that we'll go over. Okay. Uh, so hopefully this is going to be helpful for you, everyone. And uh, let's get that U.S. legal disclaimer out of the way and me off of the screen here from my balcony. But yeah, not bad, right? Not bad. Nice little breeze out here and uh, just a beautiful view. But that again, that's the great thing about trading. You can do it from anywhere in the world like I did this week. So hang tight. Going to run the U.S. U.S. legal disclaimer, and I will be back in about 40 seconds. Thank you. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. Okie dokie, let's get started again. These are going to be the trades 
in the positions that I currently have and how I'm managing them. I'm just looking, boy, I sure have a lot of them. I added some on Friday. Uh, what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine open positions. But some are long, some are short. They're not all equities, uh, which is good. You know, you need, you want to have a combination. I like to trade outside of equities too. Oil, gold, bonds, dollar, things like that. So they're not all, all so, so correlated. So, all right, let's get started with Walmart. Okay, Walmart uh, was a really good trade for me uh, so far. And I did purchase Walmart all the way back here on the 12th of December. Now, why did I purchase it? I mean, great price. I got it at 151.35, so up $10 on the trade. But what was my thinking? Why did I get involved with Walmart? Well, this is a deep dip buy stock trading strategy. This is one of the five strategies that I use. And by the way, this is one of the five strategies that I teach. I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. I have traded for 28 years. I've gone through many, many markets. I have studied with some of the best traders out there. And this is what I teach in my course. So if you are interested in learning more about trading, if you're interested in learning one-on-one -on -one from a very seasoned um, professional trader, that is what I do. I offer a course in the evening time via Skype. It's 15 hour course, five sessions. Each session is three hours. That's where you get the 15. It does cost $1,750, but I'll tell you what, it really is a bargain uh, because of the one-on-one -on -one that you get. And you, when you're finished with this course, you will have a skill that you can use the rest of your life. So if you're interested, my email is in the link of the description. But this is a deep dip buy uh, strategy here. And a deep dip buy involves the 200 day moving average, involves either or either the 200 day moving average, the 250 day moving average, or the 300 day moving average, the black, the purple, and the orange lines here, or the 30 RSI. Or even better, if you get an under 30 over 30, as well as getting over some of these major moving averages. But on this particular trade that I took on the 12th, it closed above the 200 day moving average. The previous day, it closed below the 200 day moving average. So that is one of my approaches. If you, if you reject a major moving average. So, um, like I said, the day before it closed below, closed above, I got long at 151.35. Now, I have to position size, I can't just buy a random amount of shares, I have to position size based upon what the volatility is in the market and what the value of my trading account is. So let's just use a hypothetical $100,000 trading account. I like to use 1% of that hypothetical trading account. If it's a $50,000 trading account, 1% is 500. If it's 100,000, 1% is 1,000. If it's a million dollar trading account, 1% is 10,000. It all works the same. So 1% of a $100,000 uh, trading account is $1,000. I divide that by the value of the 2 ATR. Currently, the value of the 2 ATR is $3.52. So divided by $3.52 would tell me to buy 284 shares. So I've identified the setup, the close under, close over the 250-day moving average, and then I do what I just did. I calculate based upon the volatility by taking 1% of my <clears throat> total trading capital, dividing by the value of the two ATR that shows me how many shares to buy. Now, what's the next step? The next step is that I have to place my emergency stop exactly the value of, th of what the two ATR is. So the two ATR is 352. I take my entry price and I place my emergency stop. That's this red line down here, exactly $3.52. So if I have 284 shares and it goes down $3.52. How much have I lost? $1,000, right? Because the math just adds up that way. So I know what my maximum allowed loss is on this trade. Does it mean I'm going to lose 1% every time I'm wrong? Absolutely not. You only reach your uh, emergency stop about 5% of the time. But if it did get down to my emergency stop, I would immediately sell it. I immediately lose that thousand dollars but 95 percent of the time your end of day stop is going to come into play so my end of day stop is why did i take the trade because it closed under the 250 over the 250 therefore in the future if it hit just if, if the next day it had closed below the 250 i simply would have gotten out for a very very small loss 
right? I mean, 1% is my maximum. Anywhere from here to here, from here to here is less, but it did not. <clears throat> Thankfully, it moved my way. So I wait for the signal, position size, place my emergency stop. I know where my end of day stop is. Now, the next thing I do is I place, you see an orange line up here. That is my trailing stop level. That is exactly the value of 1.5 ATRs above my entry. You can see here on my screen, 1.5 right now, the current value is $2.64. So once it reaches, if if and only if it reaches that 1.5 ATR trailing stop level, or in other words, that orange line, then I go into trailing stop mode. And it doesn't mean when I'm in trailing stop mode, it doesn't mean anything. I don't do anything. All it means is now that I'm in trailing stop mode, if I have a close below a previous bar's low, I will get out of half. Okay, and th that happened here, and I'll show you in a minute. But one last thing. So everything I just talked about, the position sizing, the end of day stop, I'm um, sorry, the emergency stop, the end of day stop, the trailing, the 1.5 ATR trailing stop level, these are all defensive moves. Let's talk a little bit about offensive moves. I like, I want to play offense as well. And how do I play offense? I play offense by, if it moves my way, the value of 0.45 ATRs right here is 0.45 ATRs right now is 79 cents. All that means is if it moves <clears throat> from the previous day's close right now, 79 cents, I will take off 10% of the position size that I have. So I'm selling into strength. So right now, the closing price is 161.32. So for Tuesday, because Monday's a holiday, I just take 161.32 closing price. I add the value of the 0.45 to it right now. It's 0.79 plus 0.79, my first profit target on Tuesday is 162.11. Then I take my first profit target, add the 0.45 to it again. My second profit is 162.90. If it got there, I'd sell another 10% of the shares that I have remaining. Then I do it one more time, plus 0.79. That's my third profit target. I'll put limit orders in for all three of those for Tuesday. And if it gets there, I will just sell another 10%. So again, if I have a nice big move up bar, I'm definitely going to take some off. All right. So <clears throat> under 250, I'm sorry. Yes. Under 250, over 250 entry signal position size, place my emergency stop. My end of day stops close below the 250. I place my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above. And of course, if it moves the value of 0.45 from the previous bar's close, I will take some off. Well, look, the next day, right off the bat, moved my way. I took two, I hit two profit targets. So I locked those in. The market can't take it away from me. I reduced my position size. So I've reduced my overall risk. And just by default, it's tightening up my stop just by taking off partial profits. So <clears throat> next day moves up. Took some profits off. A couple days down, nothing. Next day up again, I took some profit targets. And more importantly, I got to trailing stop level. So now it doesn't mean I do anything, but if I have a close below a previous bar's close in the future now, I take off half of the remaining shares. Well, that happened here on the 20th. Close below previous bar's low after reaching trailing stop level. I locked in half of the remaining shares for a gain of one. 0.53%. Okay. Um, continued up here, took some more profit targets. Inside day up, took some more profit targets. Couple inside days up again, profit targets. And we had a few days down. And then this last week we moved up, we moved up. I hit some profit targets here as well. So the trade is doing very well. Right now we're at a 6281 RSI. If I get to a 65 RSI, then the five EMA will come into play. Meaning that once I get to a 65 RSI and it closes below the five EMA, then that's the end of the trade for me. Conversely, if we continue to move up and reject the 70 RSI, then I have more rules for that to get out as well. And again, all these rules may sound complicated, but this is what I will teach you in my one-on-one -on -one course. Every single rule has a purpose. Um, and uh, like I said, I've been trading for 28 years and that's why every rule I have, there's an exact reason of why I have that rule to maximize the trading. All right. So 
the remaining share main, remaining positions I have on Walmart currently up 6.18% great trade but what I'm really trying to show you here is look look what my my potential risk yes was 1% very unlikely but again if we had just closed just a little bit just a penny below that 250 I would have been out of the trade so that's what trading's really about everyone is a good risk to reward at a major support level doesn't mean you're going to be right but the key is be, if you're right you can be right big like this trade if you're wrong which is fine to be wrong you're going to be wrong a lot you're going to be wrong small so you have the potential to be right big um, and uh, if you're wrong most likely wrong small and you know in trading it's very important everyone that you have a process so you know what to do color by numbers if it does this I'm gonna do that if it does that I'm going to do this so whether you learn it from me or you work with me or you learn it from someone else you have to get yourself a process if you just are shooting from the hip and just going you know just emotionally going oh there there we go I'm just getting out there for no particular reason other than you felt like it at the moment it's gonna be your trading is gonna be a rocky road for you I cannot implore enough to you how important it is to get yourself a process with good rules using good training fundamentals okay so remaining shares up 6.18 percent and hey by the way if you're learning something in the podcast today so far if, you, if you're finding anything valuable I would appreciate if you could hit the thumbs up button it really does help the channel and it's totally free all right so Walmart up 6.1 percent uh UUP all right well here we go I bought UUP on the 28th of December why well again this is another deep dip buy approach black line 200 day moving average the day before I bought it it closed below the day that I bought it it closed back above the 200 I got long at 2702 I position size uh, correctly of course I placed my emergency stop two ATRs below my end of day stop simply a close below the 200 I placed my 1.5 trailing uh, stop level above and of course if it starts to move up by the value of 0.45 ATRs I will take profit so next day after I bought it it did move up a little bit enough for a profit target and then next day moved up biggies and I took a lot of profit targets and got to trailing stop level as well you see these highlighted blue bars here well on this the day after I bought it this became what is called an island reversal and I love island reversals and abandoned babies I know crazy names right but they are some of the strongest uh, technical signals in my opinion uh, one of my favorite favorite uh, strategies at the moment and if you're interested I have a free video on my YouTube channel uh, abandoned babies island reversals it's in the lessons playlist uh, just check out that on my YouTube channel I think you'll find it helpful and you can see was it correct it sure was was this one correct over here it sure was okay so got long 2702 up uh, with the under 200 over 200 continue to move up I am now in trailing stop mode but I have not yet had a close below a previous bars low so I'm continuing to be in the trade again it's 5290 RSI if we get to the 65 RSI level then that will bring in a uh, close below the 5 EMA and I'm also looking for the 70 RSI rejection as well uh, currently this particular trade up 1.57 percent so good trade there oops what's that Disney Disney I took on Thursday I talked about Disney last week in the podcast um, it was up here somewhere and I said look if we get down to the 200 day moving average I would be interested in potentially getting long Disney especially because we have this 50 this is the gray line 5200 uh, e, uh, SMA crossover I have found that once you have a golden cross which is the 50 crossing over the 200 that if the first time you come back to the 200 day moving average after the cross happens it's usually not all the time but usually a good entry position and so far this has played out well so I did buy it with the confluence of a close under the 200 which is the black line close over the 200 
that is the main signal. And then we also had a V1. A V1 consists of two bars, bar one, bar two, bar two goes below, bar one's low, bar two closes above, bar one's close. So that was the confluence of signals. The close under over 200 and the V2, I got long on Thursday at 89.52. I placed my emergency stop. Where's my end of day stop? That's right. It's a close under the 200 day moving average because that was the main reason I took the trade. I placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above and Friday moved up nicely for me. You can see the point, the value of the 0.45 is 62 cents and went up uh, 94 cents. So I definitely hit one profit target. I took 10% of my position size off, reduced the position size now, which reduces my overall risk. Okay, uh, not to trailing stop level yet, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll get there. And so uh, one day trade so far on Disney up 1%. Not bad for one day. Baba. All right. So Baba, now this is a little bit different uh, strategy approach. This is called the fair value gap. I've learned this from ICT. You can look up ICT on YouTube, but I do find it helpful. Uh, I did get long... Uh, uh, Alibaba on the 18th of December. Why? Well, we had a structure change. We had a level of liquidity here. We ran the level of liquidity on this particular day on the 15th. We had a strong move up against uh, over this uh, pivot point here, changing the structure to bullish. And then we have a fair value gap and I've highlighted it in blue. Uh, the low of this bar, the high of this bar, Anywhere in this blue area is the buy zone. I did buy here at, I, 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 looks like 72.30 right here. Uh, placed my emergency stop down here, which just coincides with my end of day stop actually. Um, and uh, we moved up, hit some profit targets next day down, moved up again strongly, took some more profit targets also in trailing stop mode now. Inside day, move up again, profit targets move up again profit targets and then here on the 2nd of january i had a first close below a previous bars low and i locked in half of the remaining position at three uh point uh three point two six percent gain then we moved up again the next day took some more profit targets which is important because now we have moved all the way back down now we're moving sideways the remaining shares that i have on this particular trade are currently down slightly down 0.7 percent but look how valuable the taking the partial profits was when it was strong and the close below the previous bars close after reaching trailing stop level because i sold half of everything there right so Yes, the remaining shares are down 0.7%, but overall, the, the trade is still up. And that's why, in my opinion, have it, taking partial profits when you have them, having a process to trail and, and tighten up positions on your gains before it goes down is important. And that's exactly what happened here. Okay, BRKB. Okay. I bought BRKB all the way back here on the 2nd of January. This is what is called a return to value V2. Again, this is one uh, another strategy that I teach in my one-on-one -on -one, uh, course. Uh, but uh, notice the green line here and the green line here. This is called the value zone. From here to here, from here to here. Anytime you, you don't want to be buying above the value zone because what that means is you're above you're buying above retail you're, you're buying above value you're paying retail prices I like to pay value prices and then sell above the value zone or buy below the value and sell in the value zone but the setup here is as follows on this day here on the 13th we closed above the one ATR channel that's the first requirement for return to value. So, and then the next day we return to value, hence the name of the strategy. Above value, we return to value. We need sideways motion. I have a big helicopter going above my head. And then my entry point was here on the 2nd of January with the V2. I mentioned V2, V1s and V2s a little bit. Check out uh, the, the lesson video that I have on YouTube on V1s, V2s. But a V2 consists of three bars, bar one, bar two, 
bar three. Bar two goes below bar one's low. Bar three went above bar one's close. I got long here, 357.92. Now on this particular trade, your end of day stop is simply a close below halfway of the washout bar, or in other words, halfway of the uh, v uh, uh, of the number two bar on the V2. You see the high and the low. You see how I have this red line drawn here. This is halfway. So I got uh, long here, 357.92 intraday, moved up strongly, took some profits off. Next day, moved up again strongly, took more profits off, which is important because what is that? Remember, that's playing offense. I'm reducing my position size. So on this day, on the third, I did get to trailing stop level and I took more profits off. So right away, it was just up, 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 up. Goes to show you the strength of those V1s and those V2s. Now I'm in trailing stop mode. Move sideways, move sideways. Just kind of moving. On Thursday, we had our first close below a previous bar's low. I did uh, lock in half profits for 1.56%. And the remaining shares that I have here currently up 1.53%. So not bad. MasterCard. All right, this is another return to value. Look at the green line and the green line. Anywhere in between these green lines is the value zone. Again, we closed above the value zone, we came into the value zone, we had sideways motion, and then we had a V2, bar one, bar two goes below, bar one's low, bar three closes above, bar one's close, got long at 4.20.04. Uh, next day moved up, not enough to take profits. Next day moved up, did hit some profit targets and also in trailing stop mode. Uh, we are at, at a 64.99 RSI level. Uh, we did go higher than that, which means that now the five EMA does come into play. Okay, so if uh, right off the bat now, if I have a close below this five EMA, I am out of the trade. Or if we have a close below a previous bars low, and it doesn't take out the five EMA, then I will just take off half. But currently this position doing pretty well, up 2.1%. SPY. Okay, so this is kind of a complicated one because it goes so far back in the future. But let me show you what my thinking was. I am short on the SPY. I got short here at 474.10, so I am down a little bit on the trade. But look at this high here. See how high these green MACD bars are? Then we pulled back to red. Then we made a new high, but you see how these green bars here are not as high as these over here? That tipped me off that we are running out of buying uh, momentum and therefore we could have a move down. On top of that, we had a V1 to the downside. Here's bar one, here's bar two. I know it's a little tough because of the, here, I'll move this over a little bit like this. Bar one, bar two, bar two goes above, below. I got short here, 474.10. Moved strongly down. I did hit two profit targets, so I covered 20% of the position. I'm also in trailing stop mode now, which means if I have a close above a previous bar's high, I will get out of half. This happened here on the 22nd. I locked in a, gain, a small gain of 0.11%. Then we continued to move up. And then we had this big move down here for about a week where I took profit targets. I pr took profitable pro profitable profit targets, took profitable profit targets, and then we've had this move back up. On Thursday, we had that big move down, and uh, taking the partial profits was beneficial because we rallied all the way back up. So my stop here is a close above 480. That is a uh, order block from way, way back a couple years ago. Um, emergency stop up here. So this particular trade currently down 0.52%. USO, all right, USO. I did get long, USO is oil. I got long here 
at 66.02 back on the 15th. Why? Well, remember the blue highlighted bars. This is a this is a, a island reversal. We gap down. See how we gap down? We had one day sideways motion. Then when we gapped up. When you have these gaps down, followed by an immediate gap up, it's showing that sentiment went from very bearish to very bullish. And I have found these are very, very strong signals. Again, you can go to my YouTube channel, look for abandoned babies and island reversals. So I got long here, 6602. On this particular trade, I have a little bit different exit strategy. My, my, I, either two things are gonna happen. I position size for two ATR, loss down here and I position size for a four ATR gain up here. One of the two is going to ha happen. I'm either going to hit my two ATR stop, in which case I will lose 1%, or I'm going to hit my four ATR profit target up here. And that is proper trading, having an asymmetrical, asymmetrical risk to reward. I'm risking two, uh, a two ATR to make 4 ATR. I'm not scaling out or doing anything. This one's just kind of on autopilot. For sure, one of these two things are going to happen, right? I'm going to hit my 2 ATR stop or I'm going to hit my 4 ATR gain. Currently, this particular trade on oil up 3.07%. And VIX, I have been talking, if you've been watching this channel, I have been talking about VIX for a long time. And I have just been waiting for a signal. And that signal did come on Friday. Let me give you some big picture of what's going on here with VIX. VIX VXX is volatility. Look at this big move down here, this low. Look how deep and red these MACD bars are. This shows massive amount of downward momentum. Well, look. Currently here, we are much lower than we were here. Would you agree? Right now we're at 1483. Up here we were in the 19s. So currently we are definitely lower here than we are here. But look, there are no red uh, MACD bars to the downside as there were over here. This is called the double bottom with a missing right shoulder. I learned this from studying one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Alexander Elder. This is very bullish. It's showing you're running out of sellers, but I still needed a signal to get into the trade. Well, my signal did happen on Friday. We went, the previous day, we were under the 30 RSI. Now look, we closed at 33.19. You can see on Thursday, just to show you, look, we were at 29.39, and now we are at 33.19. So yes, we definitely had to close under, close over, the 30 RSI. I really like this trade. I don't know if it's going to work. I never know if it's going to work. I kind of go into every trade thinking it's not going to work, to be honest with you. Um, but hey, it just might. But I have a plan regardless of what happens here. And what is my plan? Okay, why did I take the trade? Because it went under 30, over 30, and we had this double bottom bullish divergence, so forth and so on. Uh, but I still am going to follow the rules exactly if Tuesday or any time next week, we have a close below the 30 RSI. I'm just simply out of the trade. I, of course, I place my emergency stop to ATRs below. That's always going to be there. And if it does get there, how much am I going to lose some of my capital? That's right. 1%. Is it likely that I'm going to lose 1%? No, only about a 5% chance, 99% chance I will lose less than 1%, which is pretty good, right? And then 1.5 ATRs above my entry is my trailing stop mode. Um, and of course, if it moves up, the value of the 0.45 ATR right now is 26 cents. So you take 1483 at 26, whatever that is, that's my first profit target. First profit target added again, that's my second. Take my second, add it again, that's my third. So that's the offensive part. I did get short right, and you see the V2 also? So we went under 30, over 30, and we had a V2. Bar one, bar two goes below, bar one's low, bar three closed above, bar one's high at uh, close. And got long here, 1471. So this one is slightly in the money, about 0.74%. Okay, those are all the open trades. I did have one trade that I closed out on INDA, and uh, this was a losing trade. This was a an abandoned baby. Uh, right here is the abandoned baby in the blue. And I did get short here at... Uh, sorry. Oh, this was the, the trade. 
I got short here 48.89, and this particular trade was either a lose two per lose two ATRs or make four ATRs. Well, it did. Actually, I lost a little bit more than two ATRs because my two ATR was here with the red and it gapped up so much that I lost a total of 2.01%. So it's fine. Not every trade works, but it was set up the correct way. I was looking for the, I, I had a good entry signal, the abandoned baby, very strong signal, but I, 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 I constructed the trade the correct way, was patient, waited for the signal, said I'm willing to lose two ATRs or make four ATRs. If I took this trade a hundred times, I would make money on it more than I would lose, but I doesn't mean you're not going to lose in this particular one I lost. So a loss of 2.01%. So real quick recap on the dailies. Uh, current gain on Walmart with the remaining shares up 6.18%. UUP up 1.57%. Disney up 1% exactly, Alibaba down 0.7%, Berkshire Hathaway remaining shares up 1.53%, MasterCard remaining shares up 2.1%, SPY remaining shares down 0.52%, USO remaining shares up 3.07%, VIX uh, remaining shares up 0.74%, and INDA. Uh, close that trade out for a loss of 2.01%. So not all winners, right? Some losers in there, but more winners than losers. And that is the key. Okay, let's go over to uh, the weekly uh, trades. And I've been in this trade for a long time. And if I'm in the trade a long time, what does it mean? It means that I'm uh, have a profitable trade because if I would not be my the way I construct my trades is that I'm out quickly when I'm wrong and I stay in a long time if I'm right and that's correct that's the correct way to trade um, XLF I bought this all the way back here <clears throat> on the third uh, I'm sorry on the 24th <clears throat> of March 2023 on the weekly bars weekly bars expire on Friday why did I buy this well here's the 250 week moving average on that week, you see how we went below the 250 and then closed above the 250. My entry signal was at $30.71, or my entry price was $30.71. I placed my two ATR stop below. I placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above. And of course, I used my partial profits using the 0.45 ATRs. Next week, moved up, took partial profits. Next week, didn't do much. Next week moved up again, took more partial profits, and it also got me to trailing stop level, which means if I have a close below previous bars low, I get out of half. For about a month and a half here, kind of went down, kind of moved sideways, didn't do much. But we never had a close below previous bars low. Then we had a couple up week bars, and this week I did take some profits. And then back here on the 23rd of June, we had our first close below a previous bars low for a gain of 6.4%. Then for about a month, five, six weeks, we moved up where I took more, more profit targets, kept reducing my position size. And then we had this big, horrible period on the way down here, all the way here on the 27th of October. If this bar would have closed below the 250 week moving average, I would have just simply gotten out of the trade. But look, it closed above, it kept me in the trade. And then ever since there, for three months, we have just gone straight up. So we moved up, took profits, moved up here, took profits, moved up here, took profits, moved up here, took profits. We are <clears throat> at a 67.05 RSI, never got to 70, but we are above 65. So this five EMA, this thin blue line here, that is my um, level that if we close below the five EMA, that's the end of the trade. I won't have to talk about this trade. You, you, I've been talking about this trade for uh, almost a year. So I'm tired of it. So I want it to close below the 5 EMA for your sake and my sake. But this particular trade, the remaining shares on this particular trade up 18.2%. And then on last trade, Johnson and Johnson on the weeklies, I took this all, I took this back here on the 15th of December of this year. Why, what was the confluence, what was the signal? Very simple, 200, day, 200 week moving average here. The week before, 
uh, I'm sorry, the week of, we went below the, the 200 and closed above. This is called an intra-week rejection of the 200. We also had a V2, a V1, bar one, bar two, bar two goes below, bar one's low, closes above, bar one's close. I got long here, 154.27. I position size correctly. I placed my two ATR stop below, my end of, uh, end of week stop. Where's my end of week stop? Anybody? That's right. It's a close below the 200 day moving average because that's what got me in the trade in the first place was this rejection of the 200. So I got long 154.27. End of week stop, close below the 200. I placed my 1.5 ATR trailing stop level above, and it got there this week. So now I am in trailing stop mode. Why is this here? Oh, that was from last week. All right, so I'm in trailing stop mode. So if I get a close below previous bars low, I will get out of half the position. This particular trade so far up. 4.99%. So really good trades on the weekly. I uh, XLF remaining shares up 18.2. Johnson and Johnson up 4.99. So really good trades. I, I hope this was helpful to kind of show you how I manage these and uh, um, what the process is and what I'm thinking about. And if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, so those are the trades for this week. Pretty good. And what I want to point out is when I have a losing trade, I'm out quickly. Did you notice? Like I hadn't been in long trades, losing trades, been in them a long time. I'm just out quick. You want to be very impatient with your losers and, and be very patient with your winners. But you have to be patient with your winners through the lens of a good process. Get yourself a good process, whether it's help from me or help from someone else. I'm telling you, you need to have a good process. All right, let's talk a little bit about trader psychology before we take a look at uh, next week's trades. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, so, trader psychology for this week is from Peter Robbins. Please follow Peter Robbins at PR Robbins. Peter Robbins was featured in the Unknown Market Wizards book. Great trader. And uh, whatever Peter has to say, I would take note and listen. Um, <clears throat> the most certain aspect of trading is its uncertainty. Yes, that's the business we are in. We are in the business of uncertainty. Um, that's what the market is, right? Em embracing the uncertainty and accepting the ine inevitable consequences will enhance your game immensely. So Peter's asking us to embrace the uncertainty. And it's true because you have no choice. You have to embrace it. But the reason I'm highlighting this text here, and you know, I was teaching uh, this week, uh, um, uh, to one of my students, Andy, and we were discussing this. And that's the beauty, in my opinion, of having your emergency stop and using the mathematical formula that I highlighted earlier in the podcast by taking 1% of your total trading capital, dividing it by the value of the 2TR, and knowing that, okay, in the worst case scenario, that is going to be your worst case scenario. 95% of the time it is not, but you have to be okay with that maximum allowed loss. And you are going to know whether or not you're okay with that loss or not. You don't have to use 1%. You can use a half a percent. You can use a quarter of a percent. But if you know what the, but you have to come to terms with the worst case scenario. And if you're okay with the worst case scenario, if you're okay with that, then anything else other than that is better, right? A smaller, if you're okay with a 1% loss, then a 10th of a percent loss or a 20% loss is better. And if you're right, well, of course that's much better, but make sure that you're okay with that loss. I have some people say, oh, I'm okay with a 5% loss. No, <laughs> it's too big. What about if you have a 5% loss, but you have four positions, then what, right? Because you have to look at it in the aggregate. For me, I don't, the way that I position size, 
it's a little complicated, but the way that I position size is that I, I, I really am not risking any more than 3% completely through all my position size. But the point here is get yourself a emergency stop that you are okay with and then you can accept the uncertainty. So the most certain aspect of uh, the most certain a the most certain aspect of trading is its uncertainty, ironically. <laughs> it's definitely certain that it's going to be uncertain. Embracing the uncertainty and accepting the inevitable consequences will enhance your game immensely. And it's true. If you're okay with the uncertainty, and what I mean by that, if you're okay with the maximum amount that you have at risk, if you're okay with that, then that's going to help you follow your process correctly the right way. But deep down, if you have too much risk on, it's still not going to be, feel comfortable. So it's the fine line of finding that sweet spot where if you if that you're okay with that loss amount and really okay with it and if you are then you're going to follow the process correctly but if it's too much if it's too much account heat on you then it's still not going to feel comfortable so find the, the maximum allowed loss in the aggregate that you are comfortable with and that will help increase um, uh, your trading profits and it will make it a much more holistic way to trade. So thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. Hope that was helpful uh, for everyone. It really was helpful for me uh, when I uh, when I read that, and that's why I'm sharing it. Okay. Let's get on to potential trades for this particular week. Now, again, I don't have any on the weekly time frame, strangely, but I have five here on the daily time frame that are quite interesting to me. Hopefully it will be helpful uh, for you. And again, just want to remind you that, you know, if you are interested in learning how to trade, if you would like to have a good coach, a good mentor, I do teach private one-on-one -on -one lessons in the evening time via Skype. I love to teach. I have taught people from all over the world, from absolute beginners to hedge fund managers and everywhere in between. So, if you take this course, I know you're going to be a better trader and it's an investment in yourself. And um, so consider it. Send me an email. My email is in the link in the description. All right, let's get going with Boeing. Hey, it's a new slogan. Let's get going with Boeing. All right, so Boeing has obviously had a lot of issues with some malfunctions on their planes. And um, <clears throat> boy, look at this. This was just a nonstop move up here i mean where was it ever going to end well all it takes is a bit of news and look what has happened but the interesting part here on boeing is we are coming really into a very important level look at the 200 day moving average the black line here and we also have the 250 day the purple line below well this is an important level for potential buyers. In addition to that, look, we're at a 31 RSI level. You know, I talk about confluences. Well, a confluence of a 30 RSI and a 200 day moving average is one of the best setups you could ever possibly get. So the 200 day moving average is at 214.40. It's about $3 below where we are right now. Doesn't mean it has to get there, but if it does get there, and it's, I think it's likely that it could get there, honestly, because sometimes that 200-day moving average acts as a magnet. This area right in here makes a lot of sense because if we re somehow re we reject the 200-day, meaning either we close under, close back over, we bounce with the 200-day, or we have an intraday rejection of the 200-day moving average, that is a great signal. But on top of that, if we reject the 30 RSI, it even makes that signal that much better. So this is a very important level for me that I'll be watching closely next week on Boeing. Ideally, we get a rejection of the 200 and we get a rejection of the 30 RSI. Doesn't mean it has to be a positive trade, but some of my best trades have come from that. And if it did reject the 200, I position size correctly place my emergency stop, my entity stop would simply be closed below that 200. And if it closes below the 200 by even a penny, I'm just simply out of the trade. Um, because if it's below the 200, then maybe the next day closes back over. 
I can get back in. See what I mean? So that's the key. So very interested to see what Boeing does next week with a uh, possible rejection of the 200-day moving average and the 30 RSI. Anheuser-Busch. Okay, you see blue. Blue means that I am looking for uh, some kind of island reversal or abandoned baby. Well, Anheuser-Busch certainly had an abandoned baby. Abandoned baby is one bar. And again, go to my YouTube channel, check it out, watch the video on abandoned babies and uh, island reversals. So here on the 9th on Boeing, I'm not sure why, but everybody had to have Boeing. See how he gapped up? Man, there was good news or there was something. I'm not sure. I looked. I didn't really see. Uh, but we gapped up big time. Well, on Thursday, boom, we gapped down right away. So we went from everybody being very, very bullish from the 9th to the 10th to all of a sudden, for some reason, being very bearish from the 10th to the 11th. Now, this would have been a legitimate short signal right here on Thursday. It would have been totally fine. But what I have noticed on the abandoned babies, so you see the gap to the left, you see the gap to the right, you see the line that I have here at the bottom of the abandoned baby. To me, in my experience, this is what I have found would be the absolute best place to short Budweiser. Honestly, to me, I don't know for sure, but the this probably signaled a major top in Budweiser. Possibly. Who knows? Maybe it just continues to go up. But this abandoned baby uh, really did signal to me probably a very, uh, at least an intermediate top in Budweiser. I didn't get short. I'm waiting for this line here, 65.57, or very close to it, the bottom, to fill this gap. Then I will get short Budweiser, and I'll probably do it with the 4 ATR stop, uh, 4, TR, 4 ATR gain to 2 ATR stop. So that's what I'm looking for with that methodology there, not the scaling out method and everything else, but just the simple four ATR gain, two ATR stop like I did on INDA, although that was a losing trade. But this is a very, this is very indicative of a top on Budweiser, not to mention, <laughs> not to mention, look, we're going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Where's the green MACD? Anybody see any green? I don't. It means it's running out of sellers. And uh, that abandoned baby right there uh, most likely signified uh, at least an intermediate term top on Budweiser. So uh, for the record, I am looking to potentially short Budweiser at about 66.57 next week. Nike, all right. This is the opposite of Budweiser. Look here, this is an island reversal, but a bullish. We gap down. We had a lot of sideways motion, then we gapped up. So there was bad news, buyers, 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 good news. I am looking for this to come back and fill the gap here at about 103.70 to get long. And I would also get long with a two ATR stop to the downside, four ATR gain to the upside. Tesla, all right. Well, Tesla has really, really, really taken it on the chin. Uh, but there are some interesting levels coming up here, very similar to um, to Boeing. Right now, we're at 31.95 RSI. Uh, we are below the 250-day moving average. We're below the 200-day uh, uh, moving average. This 300-day moving average would seem like a very interesting spot for me to buy Tesla uh, because we're at 31.95. If we get down, depending how quickly we get down to the 300-day moving average, it may line up with an under 30 over 30 as well. So next week, potentially, if we get back over the 250-day moving average, that would be a potential buy signal for me. Or if we go lower and reject the 300-day moving average, that would be a buy signal for me. I ideally would like to look for the 300 because I like to buy things as low as possible, not high. But if we did uh, have a nice move over the 250, I would definitely consider it. But if we went lower to the 300 and an under 30 over 30, that would just simply be a, a stronger signal. Okay, so two options next week, close above the 250, I would consider getting long, or if we go lower, rejection of the 300, and hopefully the three, 
30 RSI, I would get long there as well. And then uh, last but not least, UNH. Don't know if it's going to get there, but the 200-day moving average, this area down in here would make sense if it gets there. If it doesn't get there, I'm just not going to mess with the trade. And that's my suggestion to you. On the weekends, go through your charts. Look for these levels. If they get there, okay, then maybe you take some action. Maybe if, if everything lines up right. But if they don't get there, just get on to another trade. That's the key. Let the trade come to you. Let the level that you're interested in come to you. And so that's still a ways down. I mean, that's 21 points below, but maybe it gets there. And if it gets there, I will consider because I have a level to structure my trade off of. So just real quick, quick recap, uh, Boeing, very interested in Boeing next week. If we reject the 200 day moving average and the 30 RSI, one or the other, both would be better. But either, either way, I would consider getting long Boeing, Anheuser-Busch, we had the abandoned baby. I'm looking for a little bit of a counter trend move back up to about get about 65.57. If we do, I will get short. I'll place a two ATR stop above, four ATR profit target below. Nike uh, had the opposite with a bullish island reversal, looking for it to check back into the high of these levels here. It would be a very good place for me to get long. Two ATR stop below, four ATR uh, profit target above. Tesla, again, um, under 30, over 30 would be potential. Rejection of the 300-day moving average would be a rejectal, uh, re, uh, would be a potential. Or potential, we move up and get over the 250. And then, again, I just mentioned UNH if we get to the 200-day uh, moving average. So um, if that was helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button, everyone. It really does help out the channel. And... Um, helps keep the channel around and lets YouTube know there's some valuable content here. Consider my one-on-one -on -one course if you'd like to learn more and you'd like to learn with a uh, stock trading professional who has taught for very many years and has uh, uh, produced some really great traders as well. My email is there. If you like online trading courses, I have a great online trading course where I teach you specifically, not all five of the pro approaches that I use, but this particular course is step-by-step what I, how I trade the deep dip by stock trading strategy. That course is on udemy.com. The link is in the description. It's a very, it's very, very affordable. And um, you get a lot of great content there. And uh, I do want to leave off with uh, to you that please go out and try to do something nice for someone today. It really would make the world a better place if we all did one nice thing for another human being. Uh, wouldn't it just make sense? If you could go out and do one nice thing for an animal today, that would also be great. They really appreciate acts of kindness just like we do. And it's just a good thing to do. One nice thing for a human, one nice thing for an animal. And uh, be good. Be, I think the world, I think we could use a little bit more good things in this world. And, you know, let's let it start with us. I'm looking at this beautiful scenery here in Colombia. I'm going to take off and uh, uh, go visit a local town today. So, Appreciate you being here, everyone. I hope you have a good weekend, a long extended weekend, and God willing, uh, I will uh, be back with you next week and we'll discuss how this crazy market's doing. But please be careful, everyone. Um, you know, the, the the markets are definitely a bit a bit stretched right here. So get yourself a, a, a process, follow the process, be conservative, be disciplined. And if you have any questions about what I discussed here in the podcast, feel free to leave a comment in the section in the comment section and I will do my best to reply. All right. Thanks again, everyone for your time. I appreciate it. And on the way out here, I have to run the U S legal disclaimer. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. U S stock options, futures and Forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossip Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. 
any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice, and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance Result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.